I know, it's exciting. They don't want to be held at the same time. Oh, nice. I get this. Show the love. <laughs> They've all got cabin fever because we're in isolation from the coronavirus. This is, I know, I was going to introduce you in a second. Hang on. This one's Jasper. She wants down really bad. And this one's Noodles. Apparently, he wants down really bad. They're messing with stuff in the background. I'm the Tudor Wizard. What we're going to do today is we're going to do disease model one. We're going to do a series on how to model the spread of infectious diseases through a given population. And we're going to get more and more details as we go along and more and more realistic models. So we're going to start with model one, baby bear model one. What do we do in these models? Analysis part one of what we do with a model is we say we've got some kind of population which we're going to call infected and we want to describe and model what's going to happen to this infected population over time. If we just focus on one population, the infected population, we're going to call I the infected and they're also infectious so they can spread it. And now if we're looking at that population, what we do is we say this compartment is the total population of all the infected and then it's going to change over time and we want to see how that changes over time. Once I have this box of all of the population of the infected individuals, we want to say, how is that changing over time? What we do is in the compartment model is we draw arrows leading in or leading out of that. And what that says is there could be a way to create more infected people. That's going to be new infections. And we're going to have to model that somehow. <clears throat> We also have, you could have a recovery rate or a removal rate, they call it, which is going to be based on, you could have be treated from it and get treated from the disease and then you're cured and don't have it anymore and then you get out of there, you're not infected anymore. Or you could be immune possibly. And then another way to be removed from that is from death or migration or isolation. Isolation happens to be what we're trying to do right now specifically for the coronavirus. We're trying to do this scenario which will mitigate and remove as many people as we can from the infected population into the susceptible or recovered population. Then th that's what we're, the idea of what we're trying to do and model in words. From that, what would we actually say would be the proportions of that or what is the new influx of infected people or how are they re being removed out of there? What we're gonna say for this is, they're all going to be proportional to, so this says that you're gonna get a new amount of infected individuals directly proportional to the po total population you had in there. We're also going to have, so beta is going to be a positive constant. What that says is that the proportion of new infected people we're going to get going into this category over time. You can also be removed from that and the recovery rate is going to be proportional to the population. Also, gamma, basically, you can think of one over gamma is the average recovery time for an individual. One over gamma, it turns out, is approximately one, the average time that you, it takes to recover from this. And so this will be how you get removed is directly proportional to the population again. And then, of course, we always assume that there is, there has to be a death rate for all the individuals and we're going to also assume that that's constant a death rate and that it's directly proportional to the population again so in this baby model we have three ways of leading in or out of this population what does this compartmental model or transfer diagram tell us now what that tells us is this step one is create a compartmental diagram or a transfer diagram from that diagram what i want to do is step two i want to derive what we call an ordinary differential equation remember when i talk about derivatives this is just the instantaneous rate of change of the function or i want to describe how this is changing over time so in this box we have the population changing over time and therefore what that says is the change over time says that that's going to be di dt and then how do we uh, describe what's happening to that rate of change from this transfer diagram? It says arrows leading in gives me positive terms in the differential equation. What that's going to say is I get positive beta i is a term. And then gamma i is leading out, so we're going to get minus gamma i. And then the death rate is leading out, we're going to get minus delta i. We can make that a little, a little bit more better more better we can make that a little look a little bit better what i get is the idt is equal to now i can group this together 
theta minus delta minus gamma times i this is what we get. From that, what are we going to do? Now I see that this is a fairly, and this is why we did a baby bear. This is a baby separable ODE, and we can now solve this explicitly in this case. Let's do that. di dt equals beta minus delta minus gamma i. If and only if, I'm going to separate the variables. So I'm going to write di over i equals beta minus delta minus gamma times dt. And what we're classically doing is integrating both sides. And we're going to get the natural log of i is equal to beta minus delta minus gamma t plus a constant of integration. Also in there, what we're saying is at time zero, I have an initial population of infected individuals, which is positive. I need an initial conditions for my ODE also. We're going to find out what C is explicitly. This tells me exponentiating both sides. I'm going to get I is equal to E to the beta minus delta minus gamma T times E to the C using the exponent laws. Sum in the exponent is product in the basis. And then that's going to call, I'm just going to let A equal E to the C for simplicity. And that gives me, I'm just going to let A equal E to the C for simplicity. And then that gives me A times E to the beta minus delta minus gamma T. Therefore, I have an explicit solution. We'll find out what A is in a second. A our infected population over time is a times an exponential function e to the beta minus delta minus gamma t. How do I find a? I use the initial conditions. This says i0 is equal to i of 0, which is t equals 0, which is a e to the 0. What's e to the 0? A 1. So this tells me that a equals the initial population. Let's write that out. In the other videos you're watching, what they're saying is they say this, di dt was equal to beta minus delta minus gamma i, and they say therefore the solution to that is i of t equals i naught e to the beta minus delta minus gamma t, where i naught is a positive number, which is the initial population of the infected individuals. I just showed you now what they're doing. They separated the equation, they integrated both sides, they solved, they used the initial conditions to find the constant, and now I have an explicit expression for the population over time. And notice that it's a number times an exponential function. So what have we done with that? Essentially what they're saying is this. We now want to know, we're describing from that model, we see that we have exponential growth. I now want to know whether it's exponential growth or exponential decay. How are we going to find that out? This is going to be, and through the series as we go, this will be the important number that we get in all the models called the general reproduction number, or R0. In this model, what is it? There seems to be sometimes a tipping point. In one of the cases, we're going to have that, we're going to get exponential growth. And now that you can see that we're doing that, we're going to start off at I0, the initial population at t equals zero. And then it's either going to exponentially grow using this function or it's going to exponentially decay using this function. And that's what those are going to look like. This will be I naught if I get negative. When does that happen? Well, I look at, and that's going to be what we call our R naught, our tipping point of whether it increases or decreases. Beta minus delta minus gamma. If that is positive, we get exponential growth because that would give me, if this is positive, we're going to get exponential growth. That's going to give me an e to the a t. And the a is positive now. If that thing's positive, just call that a. And if that thing a is beta minus delta minus gamma is less than zero, we'll get exponential decay. We'll get this. We'll get e to the, if that's less than zero, we'll have a negative, well, it's e to the at again, but a is now less than zero. And 
h a is larger than zero. Obviously, we, I'm hoping you agree that we don't want this scenario. We don't want exponential growth of the infected population over time. We want exponential decay of the population over time. And now this is where we say we set up that baby model. We ended up getting three parameters from when we analyzed. We had initial rate of how we get new infected individuals, and then we have a death rate, and we have a recovery rate, essentially. From those three things that we put into the model now, we can get conditions on those things for when we have exponential growth of the infected population or exponential decay of the population. Let's wrap that up one more time and we get the R0 value from that. From this scenario, we now see, I'm gonna erase the pictures. This one was growth. This one was decay. This one is bad. This one is good. And thus spoke Zarathustra. There's no such thing as good and evil, but uh, they ruined it. Way to go, Zarathustra. <laughs> Way to go. As some Nietzsche. Never mind. If this is positive, this gives me, let's solve, beta is greater than delta plus gamma. I move these guys over. And then now what I want is we're going to solve if and only if beta over Delta plus gamma is larger than one. So I brought them over, now I divide by those. That's larger than one. And in this case, if I'm less than zero, that says beta will be less than delta plus gamma. And that's if and only if beta over delta plus gamma is less than one. This is R naught. This is the general reproduction number. What that tells us is that value, and that's where we're getting it from. Now you can see based on those parameter values from my system, it generates from what I think I have set up in the model to what I think is happening in that in population. I now get this condition. The general reproduction number is essentially saying how many new infected individuals you'll get in a unit amount of time given one Inter the introduction of one infected individual into the population of susceptibles. That's what the general reproduction number is telling us. Right now, Corona's at 3.2 or something like this. And what they're saying is it will, you, each infected individual is going to give over three new infections over a unit of time. And they're trying to mitigate that and get it smaller. Why is that? Because now we have two conditions. If we have that R0 is equal to beta over delta plus gamma, if that is less than one, we get decay. Now he's yelling in the background first. He's talking to the camera. We're trying to shoot video. Shut up. <laughs> he's howling like a dog. First of all, you're a cat. Cats don't howl. Dogs howl. That's what he's doing in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. What was I saying? In the general reproduction number, if that reproduction number is less than one, we get that the infected individuals... I of t decays to zero, which is what we want. It'll disappear in the population. If we have that R naught, which is beta over delta plus gamma is larger than one, we get exponential growth, which is bad. We don't want that. Also, what this tells us, if you analyze, in the real world, we see that. And when you're, you start doing ecology and all those types of things, we're on a, an oblate spheroid in space. We're on Earth, and that has a carrying capacity. It can only carry so many individuals of any population. You can't just grow unbounded. So this model is going to end up being unrealistic because of our assumptions, essentially. No models are correct. Some are more useful than others. And what we're doing in this series is exactly starting at the beginning and then trying to get the most useful model in the scenario of modeling the spread of infectious diseases. In this first one, what we saw is by just modeling one of the populations, the infected and focusing on that and making our assumptions about what's happening there, we see that we get a model which has either exponential growth or exponential decay. And that seems somewhat unrealistic in the real world because we can't have the population just exponentially grow or decay over time. There has to be some kind of carrying capacity or something happening. That's exactly what we're going to do in the next model. In the next model, what we're going to do is we're going to add a few more assumptions. Then we're going to do an SI model. What we're going to do, instead of just focusing on I, we're going to focus on the susceptible individuals and the infected individuals and see how that interacts. And then we'll get the same thing. We're going to go through this all over again. Hit the button here to subscribe. You'll get notifications for more videos. See us on Facebook at Adrian the Tutor or on Twitter at Tutor underscore Inc. I'll see you next time. Math is awesome. And if it leads out, you get a negative turn. What the hell? Fucking cat tried to jump. He wanted up there and you were ignoring him. <laughs> Reset up the angle, I guess. Yeah. That was the cat attacking the cameraman. <laughs> that was
<laughs> just feel these claws in my chest. You have to pay attention to the noodles when he talks to you, otherwise you'll get mad. Okay. There he is. 